Hello. Now, continuing our work in algebra, we are looking at equations that involve thirds. So remember, our thirds are our square roots that we aren't able to resolve easily. The key points with third equations are always going to be the same. The way you're going to get rid of the square root is sensibly enough you're going to square both sides of your equation. So the key aim in a thirds equation is going to be to isolate the square root stuff, the third stuff, as much as possible, then square both sides, and usually you'll have to solve a quadratic. That is the general uh, form of solving it. And then at the end, because there was a square root involved in the original uh, equation, we have to go back and check that our answers work out, because often you will get solutions uh, from a square root type equation that don't actually work out properly. Uh, so we'll see that when we put it into practice. So let's have a look at this equation here, and I want to solve for x. So what I am going to do is rearrange this so that I have the square root as much by itself as possible, so that when I square both sides, I have the least work to do. If I imagine for a moment I imagine for a moment that I squared both sides of this equation. I squared both sides here. I would have to do fairly unpleasant multiplying out of brackets. But if I uh, move the x over to the right hand side and then square both sides, life is fairly simple. I'm just going to get an x squared on this side and I'm going to get rid of the square root on this side. So sensibly rearranging our equations is the main skill in third type equations and then remembering to check our answer so we don't want to do our squaring just yet we're going to uh, rearrange here so we're going to do plus x on both sides and we isolate the square root. We isolate the messy stuff we have to deal with as much as possible. So now when I square this, what's going to happen? Well, if I square a square root, it just undoes it. They're like inverses of each other. And if I square x, I just get x squared, which is very easy to do mathematically. So by rearranging this x, instead of just trying to square stuff instantly, by rearranging the x over to the other side, before I did my squaring both sides of my equation, I made the, my life so much easier. So that's what we want to watch out for with third equations. Rearrange stuff, and then we have to square it to get rid of our square roots, sensibly enough. But we want to make life as easy as possible before we do that. Now I recognize that I've just got a quadratic. So I'm going to recognize that I get everything to one side equals zero x squared minus 3x minus 10 is equal to zero uh, you can go through the process of finding your factors uh, and figuring out which ones work we already know how to do that so I'm going to move ahead under the understanding that we know how to do that part. We rearrange and we get uh, x is equal to 5 and x is equal to minus 2. And we need to check our answers. So often we don't bother checking answers at the end of getting a solution. We always technically should, but we often don't. We don't worry about it too much. Here, because we've got a square root involved, it's critical that we do. So we must always check. This is a required part in the marking scheme and just in terms of getting correct answers. We must check. So I'm going to sub in 5 for my x. Uh, minus 5 is equal to 0. Uh, and then I need to sub in my minus 2 as well. 3 on minus 2 plus 10 minus x is equal to 0. 
uh, and I get root 25 minus 5 is equal to 0, 5 minus 5 is equal to 0, 0 is equal to 0, which is true. So this value of x is a correct solution, but let's check what happens here. So I get uh, minus 6, I get root 4 minus x, sorry, not minus x, minus minus 2. I've subbed in minus 2 here. So plus 2 is equal to 0. Square root of 4 is 2, plus 2 is equal to 0. 4 is not equal to 0. So this is not a correct solution. So I ignore this solution. It's not a correct solution. My only valid solution is x is equal to 5. So this is going to be the uh, way that we handle all of these third equations. Rearrange them to make the squaring of both sides as neat and painless as possible. And then we're going to have to check our answers at the end. When we've got our solutions from our quadratic or whatever comes out of squaring both sides, then we need to double check our answers in the original equation at the end. And that's it. Now, I've got a more unpleasant looking one here. I have two separate square roots. Now they're not multiplied together, so I can't combine them. They're just added. Uh, so what I'm going to do to make my life as painless as possible, I'm going to move the uh, root x over to the other side, because if I squared both sides now, I'd have a horrendous thing to try and multiply out, at least squaring out minus root x plus 7 to be squared is less bad than having to multiply out this current left-hand side. So the lesser evil is to try and isolate this bigger square root by itself and have the smaller square root and the simpler number just by itself. So now I need to square both sides to try and get rid of my square root as best as I can. So squaring a square root just gets rid of the square root. Left hand side is simple, very painless. Here is a little bit messier. Now I'm squaring a bracket so I know that I square the first term. You could just write this down as x. I'm just writing this out uh, for completeness. Multiply the first by the second and double it. And square the second. So I get x plus 7. Uh, obviously this will be positive because squaring any negative number is positive and uh, root x uh, squared is going to be just x minus 14 root x plus 49. Now, I see that I still have a square root of x here, which isn't wonderful, but I'm, what I'm going to do is try and simplify as much as I possibly can, and then I'm going to have to square everything again. Sometimes this will result in a quadratic, and sometimes you'll get lucky and it won't result in a quadratic. But we still need to square both sides again in order to get rid of this square root of x. So we're going to try and isolate the square root of x bit and have everything else over on the left hand side and then we are going to square again to get rid of our square root. So I recognize that I have uh, just one x on both sides here so they're going to sum to zero. Uh, I want to isolate my uh, root x so I'm going to get rid of the 49 here and subtract away there. Uh, so I end up with minus uh, 42 is equal to minus 14 root x. Remember, I'm isolating the root x so that I can square both sides again. Uh, then I'm going to uh, divide both sides by minus 14 to try and get the e root x by itself as much as possible. Uh, and I end up with 3 is equal to the e square root of x. This ended up nicer than it sometimes does. We could have ended up with these x's not summing to zero, and then we'd have had to square out a bracket. But in this particular case, life isn't too bad. And we're going to square both sides to get rid of our 
square root, and we end up with 9 is equal to x. Now what do I have to do at the end? I have to check. I must always check my solutions in these types of questions. So I get square root of 9 plus 7 plus the square root of 9 is equal to 7. So I add these together and I get 16 plus root 9 is equal to 7. 4 plus 3 is equal to 7. 7 is equal to 7. This is true, so this is a valid solution. So x is equal to 9 is a valid solution. So again, the defining character for these type of questions, wherever you see square roots involved, is going to be try and isolate the messiest square roots as much as possible, square both sides, solve whatever equation you get, be it a quadratic or something that cancels out nicely. If necessary, square again to get at x instead of uh, root x involved. Uh, and then you must check your answers at the end. And that's what we need for third equations.